Yeah, let's go. All I did was open it. I get a trophy for just opening it. Gas, gas. It's a statue with blood on it. And it's a dead body. Damn it. Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this. I gotta find someone to pin this on. Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. Ha 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 ha. I'm so evil. Okay, August 3rd, 9.47 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, number two. Boy, I, boy, am I nervous. Right. Oh, hi. Hi, Chief. Ooh, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have, it, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on murder trial right off the bat like this. It's a lot, or it says a lot about you and your client as well. Oh, uh, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before the case? Yes. Actually, I owe him my current job. I owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over. My life, everything is over. Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, that's him. Death? Despair? Oh, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna die. Sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. Nick? Hey. Hey, is this last thing Butts? Hey there, Larry. It is Butts, oh boy. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I, I'm afraid, or I ain't afraid to die. What? What's wrong, Larry? Uh, it's all over. I'm finished. Finished? I can't live in this world without her. I can't. Who? Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Ah, uh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Hmm. Person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspaper saying. It was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her, Larry Butts. I can't take this guy seriously. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's probably the butts, or it's usually the butts. Okay. <laughs> In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault, he just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That, and I owe him, owe him one, which is why I took the case to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going, going to do. August 3rd, uh, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number two. Court is now in session. For the trial of Mr. Larry Butt, Larry Butts. Uh, the prosecution. <laughs> the prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The um defense is ready, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Mr. Wright, is this your first trial? Is it not? This is your first trial, is it not? Yes, Your Honor. I'm um a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Thanks. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think I, uh, I think we should have a test to to uncertain your readiness. A certain your readiness? I never used that word before. Yes, Your Honor. And shaking, I sight baby. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. State the name of the defendant in this case, uh, Phoenix Wright. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Keep your wits about you, and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Aw, oh, fuck. I don't know that. I didn't read the case report. No, I didn't. It's wait. Uh-oh. No, no way, I forgot. I'm totally drawing a blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up, up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? And the victim? Of course I know the victim's name. I, um, just forgot temporarily. I think I'm feeling a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press the R1 button. What? This fourth wall break? How do you know what? First off, I can have an Xbox controller. I could be using a keyboard. You don't know. I hear assuming you should. Get on my damn nerve. Sydney's. Sydney Stone, age 22. The victim in this case, a model who lived in the apart apartment by herself. Looking kind of good. I like the hair, dude. Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright? Who is the victim in this case? My affair. Oh, fuck. I almost got that wrong. Cinder Block. Sydney Stone. Okay. I bet it's not a guess the name. Um, victim's name is Sydney Stone. Correct. Now, tell me what was the case or the cause of death. She died because she was hit with a blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why you sh we shouldn't proceed. We seem much more relaxed. We seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then. First question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blood object. Would you explain to the court just what that blood, that object is? The murder weapon was this statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. Or accepts it into evidence. A statue in the shape of the thinker. It's rather heavy. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. The evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use the R1 button to check the court record frequently. Shut the fuck up! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might cause or might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Uh, this is gonna be rough. I already know. I already know what's gonna happen. He's gonna freaking frown himself out. And Mr. Betts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy. We were together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. What? Um, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She was, or she just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me, ever. What's it to you anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. 
She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies. All of it lies. I, I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. The victim apparently arrived home from Paris at or on 7.30, so that's, um, that's July 30th, the day before the murder. Okay, got a passport in the court records. So we got to check that out. Hmm, indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Do you no know way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right, I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I? Stop information. Wait to see what happens. Can stop there. The client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheating she dog? I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in what the heck? The bottom of this? I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Oh, you know, that's not even get to the bottom of this. It was skipped it on its own. I wasn't, I didn't do that. Okay. Anyways, let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment. Whoa. That scared me. Okay. He went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Oh. Well, did you? Or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did. Maybe I did. Uh-oh. He went on. What do I do? Uh, have an answer honestly. Uh, uh stop. I'll send him a signal. Why? Like a dog. Um, well, see, it's like this. I don't remember. You don't remember? Well, then, just, or, well, then, we'll just have to remind you. I got a bad feeling about this. I have a witness that can prove he did go to the victim's apartment that day. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Order, order in the court. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witnesses. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawit. Frank saw it. Wow. To the stand. Mr. Saw it. You sell newspaper subscriptions, is that correct? Oh, oh, yes. Newspapers, yes. Mr. Saw it. You may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the heinous murder. He didn't say anything bad of that. Witness testimony. Oh shit, it's that jam. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing in an apartment. I thought he must be in the hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it, thinking it was strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, the woman not moving, dead. I followed in front, I don't know what that fucking word is. 
and frank and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a police or a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran who ran was without a doubt the defendant sitting right over there. That's what we do and now we lying in court. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to be working uh, during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Saw it used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout from your per per perusal, I guess? Blackout record added to the court record. Okay. Now, Mr. Wright? Yes, er, yes, Your Honor? You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination? Your Honor, uh... All right, right. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you're, you expose the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your court, your client is innocent, right? Then the witness must have lied in the testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness testimony to the evidence at hand. That's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the cross or the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you have found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the... What? What are you... You're a freak, all right? You're crazy. Anyways. Okay, court record with the uh, R1, then point out the contradiction testimony. Okay, okay. That's easy. I can do that. I can do that all day. That's easy. That's easy. I was going door to door selling. Wait a minute. Can I, uh. Oh, L1 is suppressed. Okay. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing the apartment. Isn't a man leaving an apartment a common sight? I find it odd that you would take notice of him. Er. Eh. I don't know. He just seemed strange to me, that's all. Like he was mad and getting frightened at the same time. He got frightened at the same time. Just like a criminal fleeing the scene of the crime. The defense requests that the witness refrain from conjecture. Of course, what the witness means is that the man he saw looked suspicious. So what happened next? I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Uh, sure, we'll press one out. Half open, you say? Yes, yes, the door was half open, or open halfway, yes. I watched for a moment, but no one came to close the door. That's odd, in a big city like this, I thought. I see, and what happened next? Thinking it was strange, I looked inside the apartment. Hold up. What gave you the idea to do that? Well, the door was half open, you see. Isn't it only human to want to peek? We climb mountains because they are there. It's the same thing. Two words have never been spoken. Anyone would look inside. Hmm, why did pain cut him off so quickly? So you looked into the apartment. What happened then? Then I saw her lying there. A woman. Not moving. Dead. Are you sure she was dead? Well, no, I, I guess I wasn't. But she wasn't moving at all, and there was blood everywhere. Guess that would look 
fatal to anyone. Well, very well. What happened next? I piled in fright. Found myself unable to go inside. So you didn't touch anything in the apartment? I mean, yes, I mean, no, nothing. Okay, what happened next? I thought to call the police immediately. You thought to call the police? Does that mean you didn't actually call them? Please, please, listen to the rest of the testimony. You thought to call the police, what happened next? However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. The phone in her apartment wasn't working? Yes, I mean, no, no, it wasn't right. But you said you didn't go into the apartment, or did you? Ooh, oh, oh that, I can't explain that. There was a cordless phone on a shelf in the entrance way. I reached inside and tried to call, try using that to call. And the phone wasn't working correct? What happened next? This phony motherfucker. Look at him shaking. Look at him in the purple suit. You're a phony. A fraud. You're wearing fuchsia. Okay. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. Nearby? What the fuck? No, no, no. Go back. A nearby park and use the public phone? What the heck? Why use a public phone? Well, you see, I don't have a cell phone. And being the middle of the afternoon, being and being the middle of the afternoon, there was no answer at the nearby apartments. Ah, right. What time did you call again? I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. You lying motherfucker. 1 p.m., are you certain? Yes, absolutely. Hmm, he seems really confident. 1 p.m.? Right. Doesn't that seem strange to you? Present some evidence to contradict him. I remember the exact time. Let me tell you something, you motherfucking lying ass piece of shit. I done told you about this shit. Look, look, look at this. Time of death. 4 p.m., 5 p.m. What does this say? Oh, wait, we don't know what it says. Um, um, yeah, yeah, you lying. You lying. Objection. You found the body at 1 p.m. You sure? Yeah. It was uh, 1 p.m. for certain. Boy, frankly, <laughs> frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes that the time of death was sometime after four. There was nobody to er, no, no body to find at 1 p.m. Ooh, how do you explain this three hour gap, boy? Uh, oh, that's, uh, er. <laughs> this is trivial. The witness nearly forgot the time. Oh, no, no, no. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Saw it? Why were you so certain that you found the body of... Found the body at 1 p.m.? I, er, well, I, gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always get more lies. Or they get more lies, I guess. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Phony ass bitch. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? Oh, he's gonna change it. The time of discovery. Do, 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 do. Okay. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, wait. It was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the... I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a tape program. 
That was why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Bro, we know you're lying. Even the judge, look at Judge's face, man. You know what's up. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a tape program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Wright, you know what to do. I've got this one. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. You said heard, not saw. Yes, heard. All I saw was a body lying there. I didn't think to look in at anything else. Least of all, my watch. Hmm. Isn't that a little strange? So you're saying you heard something. But if you were so shocked by the body, you wouldn't hear anything at all. The witness did say he actually heard the time. It's ludicrous to suggest that he wouldn't hear anything. Hmm. I have to agree with the prosecution. Witness, continue your testimony. There was a voice saying the time. Probably coming from the television. Are you sure it was a television and not a radio? Well, no, I, I guess it might have been a radio. And incidentally, there was no radio on the premises. There was only one large television. Right, I can't put my finger on it, but something about this seems fishy. Something about hearing the television. The witness has testified he heard the time. Go back. Can I present something about him hearing it? Um, something about a television, right? Can I? A passport. Blackout. Oh! Objection. The blackout. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery, and this record proves it. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Ah! I, well, er, uh, the defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Salt? No, I, I find it quite puzzling myself, quite Ah! Wait! I remember now. Mr. Salt. The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, and you seem rather distraught. Ah! But my apologies, Mr. Your Honor. It, er, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Saul. Let's hear your testimony. Once more, please. Oh, lying ass bitch. Here in the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment. Wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. But the only way you could see it, you saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. Hmm. Defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. You lying motherfucker. I already know you lying. Look at him. Sweating bullets. Lying ass bitch. Oh, the music has picked up now. Oh, shit. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. Boy? That strikes me as a very suspicious mistake. Yes, I can see how you'd be a little doubtful. I'm really sorry. I only just remembered that table clock. The table clock? There was a table in the, in the clock. Table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Hmm. A table clock. Was there a table clock at the scene? This is the first I've heard of it. The murder weapon that Kelly used on the victim. Hmm. I can't present. Can I present that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, just a moment. 
The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was a statue. Now how is this supposed to be a clock? Wah! You with your objections and your evidence, just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Saw. Hey, I I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, the statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. Um, as it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. But the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with the testimony now? Yeah, I got some problems. Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness testimony. The only way he could have known the clock was a weapon is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Your Honor, clearly a contradiction. This motherfucker lied. Hmm? Indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it. Prove I was in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. This is the sound you heard. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Order in the court. Entreaty. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Saw it? The sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit it. The voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Well, what's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. Yeah, yeah. What the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, I, that day, I, I never. Look, I, the clock, I heard no. I mean, I saw. Yeah! He just threw the toupee in his face, bro. Ugh. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up! I hate you. It was him. I tell you, I saw him. He killed her, and he should burn. Burn! Give him death. <laughs> this is the lion. Order. Order in the court, I say. Your honor. A moment, please. This isn't a shred of evidence support. Oh, wait. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the <laughs> defense's claim. Right, Your Honor. You claim the sound that the witness heard came from the clock? Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I better think it through carefully. Your Honor, the sound Mr. Satan heard definitely was. Was this def was definitely this clock a fact which is clear if you simply examine the clock's battery? That's the neighbors. That's on the clock. All you have to do is examine the batteries. I'm thinking it was like dying, so it was on the wrong time. Hmm, the batteries, are you sure it's the right way? The clock seems to be working fine. What exactly do you mean, Mr. Wright? The clock was working fine. Yes. Um, I'm sorry, I I think I got confused back there with all of the other, those other testimonies. Mr. Wright, I expect more from a lawyer in the court, even if it is your first day. I'm afraid I'm going to have to penalize you. Try to think, aw oh, man, I thought the batteries were off and they had it the freaking wrong time. I thought, the, man, come on now, man, damn. Yes, Your Honor, I, I, as I was saying, the whole case is ready. Alright, I got it. 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 Chill, man. Chill. Let's sound the clock now. Here in this court, Your Honor. 
May I have the clock? I asked the court to listen very carefully. Beep, boop, beep, boop. I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker after all. So we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Back. As you see, this clock is actually three hours slow. Precisely the dis discrepancy between what Mr. Solid heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Solid, try to talk your way out of this one. Huh? 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 You forgot one thing. Uh, what's he talking about now? While it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can prove that, you don't have it. If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. He's right. How am I gonna, gonna prove that? Damn it, I was so close, Mr. Wright. It was your lack of critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict or indict, indict? I guess, yeah. Excuse me, indict the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross examination of Mr. Frank Saw. I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal? You lawyers are all slime. I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Sock. Oh, Shucky Ducky, my eye, me and Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and, you, and you'll only, or figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. There you go. Right, right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Yes. Wait, maybe I can prove it. You must have the evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder? Maybe you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the courtroom that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha, huh. tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see the evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. It was my attorney badge. See what my attorney knows. Um. Sorry. Um. This music is crazy. Fuck. I have no idea. I want to say it's this. But we have these other pieces of evidence. We haven't used the passport yet. We haven't used the autopsy report yet. Like, I guess, how would prove? Oh, I got an idea. You can check the battery. This proves your claim? How? I can't see what that evidence has to do with the clock. Don't, that wasn't it. One more chance. Give me one more chance. Ah, oh, god dang it, dude. That wasn't it. This? Oh, 
Excuse me, this proves your claim? How? I can't see off. Oh, can't. That wasn't it either? See, that's what I was thinking. I, I was thinking it couldn't be one of those two things. It's gotta be. It's gotta be this. Oh, this is it. The victim had just returned home from a board. Abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between there, the time here and there. Oh, because she was in another country, so the time would be different. Oh, okay. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow. It was nine hours fast. Ooh, the victim hasn't reset the clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when he struck her head in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Saw. Or should I say, Mr. Did it? Yeah. He died. He got rabies and died. Order. Order, I say. Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness? He erred. He was arrested and was taken away, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. Oh wait, my bad. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly and find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. That the court is now adjourned. Objection! No. It turns out that Frank Saw was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see what people were. Oh, were out of out of the house. I see. That day, when Larry went to her apartment. The victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sawit let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawit grabbed the nearest blunt object and he could find, and he killed her. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, number two. Woo! I can't, or I still can't believe we won. Right. Good job in there. Congratulations. But thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You forgot your own battles in there, or you fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end in su on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Uh, Nick? Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no! I mean, bad! Bad, bad, bad! Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But... My Sydney Wendy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a n never mind. Congratulations, Harry. Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts initial. Completely destroyed. Heh. <laughs> um, thanks, I really owe you one. I won't forget he didn't even correct her. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate dinner, movie, my treat. Oh no, I couldn't. Hey. hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh hey. Here, take this. It's a present. A present? For me? 
Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Really? You, you made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that shit. And, and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't you... Don't that make you want to just cry? Larry. Are you so sure? You squeeze me? Why would he ever say that? Come on. I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Oh, yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? This. Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't some, just some chump to her. Huh? What about the plot? This is the clock you made for her, Larry, and she took it with her when she traveled. Whatever, she probably just needed the clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to be traveling. Well, well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick, I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a, a little better. Mr. Wright, I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. Hmm. People too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right. Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner on me? We'll drink a toast to Innocent Buzz. Um, yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry. You were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Er, yeah, part of, part of this. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to be good to have friends, but I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us unless you count the uh, clock he gave to Maya. I didn't know it then, but that clock was soon going to be the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Harry, or Larry, would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. I don't say that. I guess it's the end of the episode. <sighs> they about to kill my head. Boo! A brand new episode has been added. That's cool. So that's the end of the first episode. And that was fun. Yeah, I want to save my progress. Oh, we haven't even... Damn, dude, we better save. That was going to be rough if we didn't save yet. All right. We'll finish this up next time.